Hi guys, it's Tao from Shine Bright Design and today I'm going to show you ways to hold your pencil and um, things that you can do to help benefit um, your wrist health while you're coloring as sometimes you color for long hours and it can be very strenuous on your wrist muscles and people who have um, arthritis. So I'm going to show you some tips today. It'll be a very short video so I hope you guys enjoy. So the first thing you can do is purchase this, which is an ergonomic mouse pad. This ergonomic mouse pad is around 10 centimeters wide. It has a neoprene uh, fabric on the top and it's got a silicon base. Um, it's also got some ridges in it as well. And the thing that is great about um, an ergonomic mouse pad is that it allows you to rest your wrist on it and elevate it at the same time. So you're not always having to use your muscles to bend in a certain way. So when you color, like when I always place on the paper towel, you can always put this down instead and color as well. Now, if I wanted to upgrade this a bit more, I can always get a piece of neoprene fabric and glue it to the bottom as well. This has a silicon base, so I'm sure it's gonna cause no issues, but we'll see. I do recommend getting one of these. Um, I will be opting for this rather than a piece of serviette uh, paper towel to do my work. So that's number one. Number one, the tripod grip or the writing grip. This is what you traditionally learn in school and you're basically using your index and middle finger between and your thumb. This allows you to draw uh, very tight lines, very tiny detail. So this one is a very controlled pencil grip technique and I recommend doing this when you're doing a lot of detail or if you need to focus on your blending technique and doing small circular motions, this gives you better control. This will also use a lot of your wrist muscle as well and the palms. And the best thing, the thing about this is that when you use this technique, you're always elevating your, your wrist above, like so, right? That's why I always like to tee it up with an ergonomic mouse pad. So from this demonstration, you can see all four fingers being used to control the tip of the pencil. This grip has the most control, but it uses the most muscles within your hands. Now, if you can imagine holding your pencil like this for hours and hours, it can cause a lot of strain on the wrist. And so it's important to learn the other grips so that you can rest them. It is also noticeable that with these grips that you lean on the pinky side, always tee it up with a mouse pad to help. What I want to show you is called the painters, the painters grip. And that is like holding a paintbrush, you can hold the pencil the same way. And this allows you to step away from the canvas, step away from the page, and just loosely do what you need to do. And this type of technique isn't really utilized for um, fine detail, but it's used for um, assessing the whole piece together and making that judgment where the pigment will go, where the paper, where the pencil color will go. This is a very loose type of technique, um, and it's really kind of a sketching type of way grip. So. If you're doing fine detail, this is not the type of grip you go to. This is more like a grip you're doing like a loose sketch in the background. Or if you're adding detail or shape where you need to assess the whole picture rather than looking so close into a finer detail here. So this technique is called the overhand grip technique. Now this technique relies on the four fingers sitting on the top with the pencil resting on your thumb. Now the way this is controlled is that using the four fingers to guide the bottom of the lead of the color core and create big surface impact on the piece of paper. Um, so this is for 
maximum surface impact and to create shading on big areas. And this is really great because you're taking the strain away from say a tight grip method and using this just to relieve the tension in your wrist and just to give it a break. So this is great for big surface impact and if you can use this technique you're going to give your hand a bit of a rest. So for some the underhand method can be quite intimidating because you're not able to have that control that the tripod gives gives you but it will allow you to have bigger surface impact as well. The thing about the painter's grip is it teaches you to become loose with your art. So a lot of the things that I teach in my work is to not be so meticulous about the overall piece of work but actually just go with the flow, be loose. Let your energy guide you when it comes to the paper and using the painter's grip or holding your pencil further back, even tripod further back, right? Just allows you to loosen things up a little, you know? Don't allow yourself to get too uptight about the piece and just loosen yourself in your expression. So, like the tripod grip, we hold it at the top. There is another one called the brush grip, which is you do the tripod but in the middle. This gives you still somewhat of control that you get similar to the tripod grip but because it's further back you have that in between painters the painters grip and in between the tripod grip so it's still loose but you have somewhat of more control so this type of grip will prevent you from leaving heavy marks because your pencil's being held further back it's going to give you a looser approach to your work as well. And this is great for light, light, delicate movements. But the thing about this one is the, the brush grip won't allow you to have precise, precise application. But if you're doing things like background or big surface areas or sketches, the brush grip is perfectly fine. When you come to colouring something right on the edge, tripod would be more ideal. The fourth one that I'm going to teach you is called the overhand grip method. Now I rarely use these. This is something that you would more see in a painting. But we can use it in colouring as well. This is kind of in between a brush tip method and a tripod method. So what it is, is your thumb is underneath and you have three fingers at the middle and then you have your this finger at the top. And it gives you control of where the... So it gives you the tripod control because you're pushing weight on here and you're not using the tightness of your wrist muscles. This one I would I would say is the most so the overhand tip grip method is much so like the overhand uh, grip method but the tip aspect of using your pointy finger um, to control the core of the of the pencil really gives you that precision and the finger allows you to guide the where the tip goes and it also gives added pressure into the shading amount. So as you can see how I'm shading the pencil at the moment, having that tip aspect where it is sitting right on the lead allows for precision of where it is guided across the paper, but it also gives it the extra pressure um, to color in heavy surfaces. 
Now the underhand tip isn't so much used by me, but sometimes I will do it. This is just a lot of um, calligraphers, artists, like painters, draftsmen use this just to like draw lines like so. If they're going up the page or they're doing like squiggly lines. So this one is a very, it's a very loose, it's very um, thin and it's very fluid type of movement using this type of grip. And that's why people who are calligraphers use this or people who are um, topographers use these type of grip. Um, just because it gives you that more fluid, of, fluid approach. Now a version of the underhand, which is this one, is the underhand grip upwards. So that's holding it this way. So this is generally for painters as well. Um, I don't really use this as much when I'm coloring because I'm facing the, the pages on, on the surface. But say you, are, say you have a canvas and you're looking at it, you can use it to, if I elevate, you can use it to draw similar fluid lines so as well. So this is very much excellent for when you have a canvas in front of you and you want to assess the work but also draw down or up the page. So to recap we have the tripod grip or writer's grip which gives you great detail and control of your artwork. You have the so the second one is a brush grip and this is in between a tripod grip and a painter's grip. This is excellent for looking further back and assessing the work, but it also gives you somewhat of a detailed control. The third one is the painter's grip, where if you're holding something like a paintbrush or you're drawing from a distance, this is really good. It's got a very loose um, control as well. The fourth one is the overhand grip. And this allows you for big surface areas being loose. And this uses the, one, the underside of the lead. And a uh, step up from... So you got the overhand tip grip. Now this one gives you the control via the pointed finger on the tip of the pencil as well as the three fingers across the middle guiding. So your final two grip techniques are the underhand grip upwards and the underhand grip. These are fluid motion grip methods and the basically they are targeted at painters, topographers, calligraphers. And the basic use for these type of grip methods is that the individual has a canvas in front of them. Maybe they also have it laying on a flat surface as well. But the basic principles of these grips are that you're using it to draw a fluid line or a fluid type of emotional stroke um, downwards on the canvas or upwards on the canvas. So that's why it's targeted at calligraphers and it's typically about that fluid organic motion. So guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting my channel, watching this video. Hope you guys have learned something new. And, you know, these are just some little tips that I could just give to you guys if you want to keep coloring for seven, nine hours at a time sometimes. That's what I do. Anyway, guys, thanks for your support. Thanks for all the love. And I couldn't have done it without you guys. I couldn't be where I am without you guys and have this passion. So, guys, that's all from me today. Stay safe. Be you. Be true. Shine bright. Bye.